All across North America, bear hunting seasons open about the 1st of September. Especially in the upper Midwest, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota, there's something that happens every year about that time. It just never fails every year about the 1st of September. People start saying, what happened to my bears? I had good bear activity, I had daylight activity, I had big bears. I had small bears, it was going great, and then all of a sudden, right about the time the season starts, it just kind of all went haywire, and um, bears are really irregular, they went nocturnal on me, they're hardly coming in at all, and I'm telling you, it happens every single year, and I get these calls from people, and emails, and texts, and Facebook messages, people are saying, what do I do? All of a sudden, my bears disappeared. Well, I'm going to give you five reasons why that probably happened. And I'm also going to tell you that it's probably not just one of these reasons, but it's probably a combination of one or two or maybe even all five. And the first one for new bear hunters is the most common, and that is you oversugared your bears. You just gave them too much sugar. And they've been eating away at this, and, and they just kind of hit this point where they go, oh, man, I just I can't eat another donut. Um, I, you know, you got candy in there and licorice and all these things. You're at the point where, you know, you're fighting against their natural instincts, so they're designed to eat natural foods. And so we're always fighting against those natural instincts to go after the natural foods. So... Feeding too much sugar is one of the worst things that you can do right around that time period. And I've learned over the years that I start them out with more sugar and then cut back and always have a little bit. Pastries are good to always have some pastries in there. But after 10 days or so of baiting, you'll find that my baits have very few candies and licorice and um, just sweet sweets in them. I'm almost exclusively at trail mix and uh, you know good breads and pastries and and things like that now to compound this fact the thing that everybody talks about and is always a part of this is the fact that a lot of natural food becomes available about this time typically the, in the upper midwest the acorns start to drop if you're in the northeast you're you got beech nuts that are coming available you got hazelnuts typically the last week or so of august blackberries are ripe in, uh, in most areas. There are lots of natural foods and bears are, like I said, designed to eat natural foods and what we're doing is trying to pull them away from that. So typically about the 1st of September is when the acorns start to really fall and if you've got white oak acorns um, the bears are going to gravitate towards them. There's really not much you can do about that. But also keep in mind that the acorns don't have to fall. Bears can climb trees and get to the acorns. I've seen many times when bears are up in the trees, shaking the branches, um, pulling branches in and eating the acorns that aren't even falling. So as the acorns start to become ripe, the bears are going to naturally gravitate towards them. That's number two thing that happens about that time. The third thing is something that few people realize and that is that bears will travel long distances and they'll just leave. Your bait might be in their summering area and they might just leave for the fall. They have put GPS collars on bears and found that there are shocking distances that these bears sometimes travel. Here in Minnesota they've learned that by putting GPS collars on these bears and tracking where they are all the time that there are bears that go 50 to 60 miles to where there are good quality natural foods like acorns. It's nothing we're learning for an adult mature bear to travel 5 to 10 miles to where the food sources are. And they know where the food sources are because they were taken there by their mother when they were a cub. So they might have completely migrated out of your area. The fourth thing that often happens is that there's been so much human intrusion at your bait site that the bears just lose their comfort level. If you're coming in there all the time, if you're baiting all the time, then the comfort level, the security feeling that the bears have at that site starts to diminish. And once that diminishes, 
they'll go nocturnal on you sometimes other times they'll just go somewhere where they feel safer you've got all these natural foods available to them right at a time when they're starting to reduce their comfort level all these things are kind of coming together all at once and the other thing is you don't always know how much intrusion there's been there it's one of the reasons why I never drive an ATV right up to my bait while I'm baiting especially a week or so before the season and during the season there could be a lot of other people in the woods you got mushroom hunters you got berry pickers you got squirrel hunters you can have a lot of other people mostly what I hunt is public land and over time if they see a trail they might just walk down it and and you might have multiple people that have went to your bait that you don't even know about so it's a good idea to try to minimize the amount of sign that you're leaving maybe have two or three ways that you approach the bait for the last 40 50 yards or something like that so you aren't leaving a really distinct trail that people will look at and want to follow so the human intrusion is a, your intrusion and other potential persons intrusion uh, is a big factor in why the bears just kind of their security level goes down they don't feel as safe there and they might just go to another bait where they feel a little safer uh, the location maybe is a little better or whatever so that's the fourth thing and that can be especially true once you start to hunt because once you start to hunt you're coming in there more you're making noises you got stands hung and things like that and uh, it all adds up to the feeling that they just don't feel quite as safe in there so the fifth thing is starts to develop over the first few days of the season and that is that somebody might have shot your bear there's other people baiting near where I'm baiting most of the time there's you know most of my baits have another bait within a couple miles of in one in one direction or another there's quite a few people in the woods if you're in a good spot probably other people know about it there's a lot of good hunters out there that have got this figured out they've been watching my channel and they're learning an awful lot about things that people didn't know about 10 years ago and as I've developed some of these things it's just natural that I'm finding out that more and more people are doing the same things exactly the way I've been doing them and they're being more successful so they're shooting the bears and uh, as the first few days of the season develop bears are dying and it might be one that's visiting multiple baits and yours could be one of them and that's why you lost your bear so I've seen in many cases where I've got baits that are two miles apart and I've got bears that are going back and forth between them. This year I had a sow with three cubs that went back and forth between two baits that are 1.8 miles apart as the crow flies and they had to cross rivers and streams and swamps and think about little cubs going through the woods and how hard it is for them to climb over fallen logs and they got to cross roads and all this stuff. And she would sometimes take those cubs from one bait to the other in the same day. And they're almost two miles apart. Adult male bears, it's nothing for them to go five to ten miles. So you got to hold them at your bait with the right bait or you're probably going to lose them. And it's potentially an issue that you lost one of those good bears to someone else. So, so anyway, those are five reasons why you lose your bears. And those are things that you can do to help minimize that problem and frankly we can't eliminate the problem because what we're doing in a way is battling with the bear's nature which is to eat the natural food so we got to just provide them with super high quality bait the best they can get the best nutrition and everything and uh, that that's your best chance of keeping them on those baits and minimize your intrusion don't use too much sugar and uh, you'll get your bears thanks a lot for watching please subscribe and like the video comment if you'd like hope this helps you get a bear in the future we'll see you on the next video